this is probably the, I, I'm pretty sure this is the biggest gathering of Sailor Moon voice actors in like convention history. That's a pretty big deal, I think. Um, you know, I've been to some cons, we've been four or five together, and this is a pretty big deal. Last year in Vancouver, they had, they had a few, I think like six, but Toronto's better than Vancouver, right guys? <laughs>
I didn't know anything about the character really, except I remember we were coached, I think, to have two different versions of the voice. One of the empowered voice, which is when you're saving the universe and getting butt, and the other one is just your ordinary high school girl voice. And I don't know to what extent we actually maintained that over the years, but I think that was the concept. That's my memory of it. It was crazy. I didn't understand a word I was saying. I didn't know what we were getting involved with, and I had no clue it was going to become something of an actual audience. Any other thoughts? Um, okay, I have a thought. Um, you said did we audition for anything else? Well, of course, all of us wanted to be Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think I read for almost every single uh, female character, except for Luna. I know I didn't read for Luna. Um, and I, I think in my heart of hearts, I really, well, we all wanted to be Sailor Moon because she was the star and she had the most lines. <laughs> We're all actors, after all. But then after a while, what I found um, from reading the scripts is that I was able to actually pinpoint uh, things about Jupiter that were astonishingly like me. And I think sometimes when you look at the, the photos, and actually we have some photos taken during the time we were shooting, we actually did kind of um, resemble the character that we were playing at the time. So I had brown hair, and it was in a ponytail, and I, I said, well, that's who I should be. And I love horses, and I love green, and I love to kick ass. So <laughs>
about half an hour ago that we had a baby together. <laughs> This with Diana, my kid, and he said, by the way, you have a kid? I said, I have a what? <laughs> I said, when I was auditioning, I was told to be Queen Victoria mixed with Yoda mixed with C-3PO. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're all old. And it's a bit difficult for any of them to have a baby, so it was a bit of a shock when they said, by the way, you have a baby. And then I thought, but we've been so to go meet somebody at uh, McClear Path A. I think that's where it was, the auditions for me anyways. And um, just got to uh, read a quick little byline about the character. I, they gave me a little something to hear about Reno, which I don't know is legal. Uh, but they said, you know, do, this is how he sounds and why don't you just do something like it. So I kind of completely copied him. And um, <laughs> uh, I acted taller, better looking. And, um, and then, um, Pretty much, uh, I walked out the door like Ron said, and I, had, I was riding a motorcycle that time, and just before I put my helmet on, I got the call, it was pretty much within minutes. So, very different they do things this, these days. But uh, yeah, it was very, very cool. But a little weird taking over a job for somebody, because you want to be able to fill their shoes properly and do, do it justice for the people who are already were doing it. And uh, that's uh, that was a nice story. Here you go. I am, um, yeah. I had a similar experience to you in that I share the mantle of Sailor Moon with two really talented voice actors, Tracy Moore and Linda Valentine. And when I came in, <laughs> and when I came in, Tracy was leaving the show, um, and it was after six episodes, I believe. And so they also played a tape for me of Tracy's. But I'll give you a little little piece of interesting background information. Tracy and I grew up in Calgary, Alberta, together doing community theater together. Oh, yeah. wow. And so I had done a previous series called Care Bears, and I did a couple of voices for that. Yeah. And, and after I recorded many, many shows of Care Bears, I moved to New York City, and there came a time when I couldn't return to complete the subsequent episodes, and Tracy was hired to take over those two roles. So obviously there was something similar in our voices that certain producers heard, and this is one of those times. So Tracy had gone and had started the series out in a great way as a director and as a writer, and I was really privileged to, uh, to take on the role after that. And I had also a very rushed experience. I showed up at the last minute. I had some other plans. I had some guests in from out of town. I, I snuck away to the studio. They kept me for quite a while, and then at the end of the audition, they asked me to, Nicole asked me to take on the role. I said, well, when would you be starting? Tonight? Now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did a 
much better impression than Nicole. <laughs> Now, Sailor Moon has obviously become a huge phenomenon, especially in Canada, it seems obviously, with all these people here, very popular. Um, did you ever expect it to be this huge, and have you ever been able to sort of capitalize on saying, hey, I was in Sailor Moon, I played this character to get away with something, you know, it's just crazy. Well, there's got to be a lot of um, respect for my students. <laughs> Because uh, I was uh, teaching at was teaching at Humber College and now teaching at Niagara College in the acting film and television program. Um, and I think there are some students here. <laughs> Over there, there they are. Hey, All the way from Weldon. <laughs> you pass. <laughs> I don't think any of us had any idea. I certainly didn't. I mean, back then, 20 years ago, we uh, went to the studio and it's, uh, we taped at night. It was like midnight half the time and it was somewhat rushed at times and it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of us crammed into a booth and it was what it was at the time, but uh, it, it, it blows me away. I think it blows all of us away to see the resurgence and the fan support that we're getting after all these years. It's just, it's just awesome. I don't know. Um, it got me into the Silver Snail. <laughs> Darling, I have so much to teach you. Okay. <laughs> now what happened is I have a drama school for young people, Dragon Trails, that I have for 20 years, and I, um, we make movies every so often, and I like to shoot on location, and I really wanted to shoot in the Silver Snail, and they said, oh, no, 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 and I said, by the way, I was not And they said, oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So we shot in there, plus the lady I've been talking to disappeared and came back with a picture of Luna and got me to sign. I was just going to add a little personal thing. The, me having the role of Sailor Moon when I did gave my mother some street cred, I got to tell you. <laughs> so at that time when, as, and as Ron said, I think Ron, you just said we didn't know kind of what this would become, any of us, right? And so there came a Halloween, right about now, quite a few years ago, when little girls and boys would start dressing up as Sailor Moon characters and show up at the doors on Halloween, which was a surprise, I'm sure, to perhaps all of us. No, um, more so than to my mother, who loved Halloween and really engaged with the neighborhood kids. And so when little Sailor Scouts would come to the door, she would greet them at the door and she'd say, I'm Sailor Moon's mama. <laughs> didn't touch on that was sort of an important thing to you guys that you think uh, would have been nice? I think break dancing. Uh, they didn't have to play. <laughs> and I think, well, just me first. No, I don't know. Um, the, the, uh, I think it was pretty good for like honor, respect, love, all that kind of thing, serenity, cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this one right here? No, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty neat. Uh, Problem with the PSAs. Yeah. Oh, the sailor says that yeah. at the end of the episodes, yeah. Do you know why they were there? Because there was some nudity that you weren't allowed to see. <laughs> and some bits that they didn't think were correct were good for an American audience. And so, you know, we would have been fighting these ladies with these enormous. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, we'd say, Sailor Moon says, brush your teeth. <laughs> Uh, there was one thing that we had difficulty with, um, was finding monster voices, you know, because the monster voices, uh, generally speaking, had to be deep, male, you know, um, and, uh, you know, we, we just ran out of deep male voices. Now, as it turns out, uh, there was a singer named Lisa Del Bello, who was recording her album down the hall from us, and uh, she and Nicole had become kind of friendly at the coffee table. And so Nicole is going, Roll off, you know, can't you get me a uh, deep voice? 
and I went, I kind of run out of deep voices. And then I thought, what about Lisa? And uh, uh, Nicole's eyebrows shot up so far, I thought they damaged your forehead. <laughs> um, so we did. We asked her to come in, and she came in the very first day. She was very unique and a little nervous, and she said, look, I'm not an actor, so if I really suck at this, uh, kick me out, by all means. Well, as it turns out, she did probably the best monsters of all. She was so creative, um, and every voice she had fit exactly to the character. It was one sneaky type character, and she kind of hissed out her mind. Um, and really, the hat's off to her. She's a tremendous talent, both as a singer, and as it turns out, as a voice actor. So, uh, just curious what kind of project you guys are up to now. Obviously, Salem has been on the air for a while, and then wondering if you guys are up to some of your own voice acting, some of you moved on to other things. So. Uh, I'll just go down the line, maybe, I guess, sure. so it's not awkward. Um, so, yeah, actually, last, last week, I don't know if you know, uh, there's a worldwide uh, film festival called the 40 Hour Film Festival, and it's pretty neat. There's 4,400 films on average worldwide that get entered in the competition. And I was asked by uh, the last year's winners that went to Cannes to help uh, cast it and do some uh, production with it. And uh, so, kind of neat, that's, that's what I was doing. It's, uh, you, you get your genre drawn at 7 p.m. Friday night. You have to write your script, start shooting, and be posted, and edited, and everything in delivery by uh, Sunday at 7. Wow. Uh, so, very cool. Great. Luckily, we got sci-fi, which was good. That was the genre we were given. It was kind of neat, because one of the animators was from the Watchmen uh, um, uh, show, so that was good. Uh, we had some animators, compositors, and uh, it was really uh, very lucky we didn't get to a love story because it would have been really hard to put effects in that thing. <laughs> Just the last I have one last idea, story. but I don't think it's good for this. <laughs> uh, in the nineties, I started writing and directing playwriting. And I continued that, and I had a couple of kids, so I added that to my list of, of jobs in life. Wonderful job that I have, my mother. And then um, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to to learn some more research skills to uh, work on a play that I wanted to write. So I enrolled in grad school. So I just completed my requirements for uh, a master's in feminist gender and women's studies. And I'm working on a PhD. I'm going right through a PhD in theater and performance studies. So, taking my research and applying it to, uh, to plays that I'd like to write in and to performances that I'd like to do that. And actually, that's one of the reasons I love Sailor Moon, which I hadn't been as aware of at the time, but it was really the gateway to anime as far as, as superhero girls go. And I imagine most of us, all of us on this panel, are really proud to be part of that because, as Ron said, that's really not the norm. They're usually empowered boy heroes, and that's fantastic, but it's really nice that it's not always so gender. And even though there are some imperfections, and you know, you asked about the things I didn't love about Salem, and I didn't love that there were all these 14-year-old girls in short skirts, and that was very sexualized and that kind of thing. But I would put that aside, because I think that the positive completely outweighed the negative. I think it was wonderful that these little girls, who were imperfect, and had their own challenges socially and, and out there in the world could call upon these strong powers within themselves to go out and and create a positive force in the universe. And I think that's an amazing message. And I've been told by fans like yourselves that it, that it affected girls and boys and gave them just a, a broader perspective of, of their possibilities and their place in the world. And for that, I'm, I feel so privileged to have been part of this production. And, and, When I was uh, doing voice work, I, I was not yet uh, writing, but I since then became a TV writer. Uh, I uh, co created a show called Flashpoint. <laughs> Um, an incident happened in Toronto that it was a very 
frightening, tragic incident involving a sniper. We were made curious by that. We started doing research. We developed a show, and we ran the show for five years. And that's we decided the time had come to, to end the show. So we did that about a year and a half ago. Um, so that's what we've been doing. Uh, we have uh, since that we're developing two new shows for TV, um, <laughs> which I would love to tell you about, but I sort of can't yet. We're hoping. Well, no, I, I, I would love to, but um. We won't it, tell you. <laughs> Recording devices. <laughs> I do tell you, but then I'd have to kill you, and that's a clue <laughs> about the genre um, of at least one of them. Um, if they go forward, well, we should find out within maybe the, the new year, and then we have some news for y'all. We're doing good with you too. Carrie Fisher. <laughs> I just sound like her. Ish. Anyway, um, I saw, actually, I saw Carrie Fisher's interview at uh, Fan Expo. I, she cracks me up. I just think she's so funny. But we're not here to talk about Carrie Fisher. And I'm certainly not, uh, God, I mean, I love her. Uh, but we're here to talk about us. And, and, and <laughs> I was listening to these high achievers to my left, and I'm saying to myself, Holy crap, what am I going to say? What, I, I clean toilets? I, uh... Yeah. Uh, actually, I am... <laughs> I stole it from me. Uh, I actually am working on a series now called Creative Galaxy for Amazon.com. It's a wonderful show for preschoolers, and you have to be a member, I think it's Amazon.com Elite or something like that. I don't know, we don't have it here in Canada yet. So that's why I sound so ignorant. But I would like to pick up on something uh, that Terry said um, about the fact that Sailor Moon really was, as you said, the gateway uh, to anime. I think there might have been that little Pecola show or whatever beforehand, but Sailor Moon was really the start of this phenomenon in North America. And certainly none of us realized it at the time. And when I look back, and I, I was looking at some episodes on YouTube, and what struck me was how fresh everything was, how fast, how fast everybody talked. The mouth movements, that was so untraditional in normal animation, those, especially Sailor Moon's mouth. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and that was unheard of because they didn't want to make a female character look vaguely unattractive, and so those mouth movements made her look unattractive and real. Right? I mean, that's what was so nice about it. And because we had to do those shows as quick as a lick, uh, we didn't have a lot of preparation. We never saw the script beforehand. So we never knew what the heck was going on. So it had a kind of a, an immediacy about it. And I think that when you throw actors, good actors, like the actors on this table, you won't find any better in Canada, I can assure you. And you put all those people in a room and you say, just do it. They do it. They rise to the occasion. And that's what gave it that special something that I'm missing in some of the anime that I see nowadays. And I'm not, too, I'm not being critical of the anime that's on nowadays. I'm not being critical at all. I'm just saying there was something special about Sailor Moon. <laughs> Wait. 
and say that both these women are absolutely incredible actors. Oh. Not only, like, I mean, you both had on camera careers, um, and not necessarily the past tense. You're both incredible card pet commercial and cartoon voiceovers, so stop with the toilet cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do, but I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> I, uh, I have been fortunate enough to. I make my living doing animation voices, and I have for over 20 years. And I think. <laughs> at a convention anywhere, so yeah. thank you. enough to be working on Julius Jr., which is airing in the United States on Nick Jr. Um, uh, I've worked on Garage Band and I'm working on um, Nunchucks, and uh, this, is a new, this is a new series, and uh, The Day My Puck Went Psycho. <laughs> also a new series based on a book, and uh, Arthur, season 75. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I don't know what else to say except I, I like being people who aren't me. <laughs> Living toilets. <laughs> My toilet needs cleaning. <laughs> Do the talk. Oh yeah. This is uh because I have a split personality. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to you know refer back and say yes, this people sitting at this table are the best uh, actors I've ever worked with in my life. And, uh, you know, after Sailor Moon, I, because I directed Sailor Moon, the first 65 episodes, I got to direct a, a bunch of other uh, series after that, none of which you will ever see. Uh, one was translated from the Russian, it was called Inside the Moon, so there's sort of a theme a going there, yeah. And another was uh, uh, translated from Syrian, and I think it was really meant for um, the children of diplomats, so that they could learn English. Uh, because the, well, there was a lot of religious references in this, which didn't really, you know, fit with us. Um, but during the summertime, I don't teach, um, so I have a lot of time on my hands. So this past summer, I wrote a book about Sailor Moon. And I have received some fantastic contributions from people at this table, telling about their experiences. So if you want to know everything, well, almost everything, about uh, what went on behind the scenes of Sailor Moon, uh, don't expect any dirt, because there isn't any. Um, but just some, all of their experiences, how they achieved their voices, uh, all, all the stuff that went on, and, and some personal experiences of mine. I remember one moment particularly, because the days were very long, and the actors were there for maybe three hours, but uh, the director's there all the time. And the days were like 15 hours long. And it was at the end of uh, one of the days, well, it was around 7 o'clock, and you know, I've been staring at a television monitor for you know, 10 hours. And um, for some odd reason, so the only time it ever happened was that all the Sailor Scouts were there at the same time. And at the time, they all looked very much like their characters. So in my very hazy state, they came marching towards me with a purpose. Um, and it struck me that I like, got into a, a different world or something, and these were the actual Sailor Scouts marching towards me. I really believed it at that moment. You know? and, uh, but they were marching with a purpose. Uh, the purpose was not to uh, fight the Negaverse, but to deliver their lines, you know? That was a really uh, odd moment in my life. <laughs> anyway... You took away the Jack Daniels, but it was all... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you knew about that. <laughs> um, so there are pre-order forms here, uh, if you would like to uh, order a copy of the book. It's in the hands of my editor right now who does what an editor does, which is makes you look like an idiot and tell you you don't know anything about writing. 
Um, but it's going to be a good book. There will be pictures from the uh, recording sessions as well in it. So um, please buy it. Hello, everyone. How y'all doing out there? Are you having fun? I don't have a book to sell. My toilets are clean, and I still want to be sitting in the room. Uh, I just want to quickly echo what Julie said. Uh, I've been making my living doing um, silly voices and sound effects for about 25 or 30 years, and it's, it's just phenomenal. It really is. My parents have no idea what I do for a living. And, um, it's, 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 it's just been wonderful. Uh, I continue to do that. Uh, we wrapped up season two of Sidekick last year. I play the, the evil master Zarks. <laughs> yeah. uh, which is one of my favorite characters. Uh, we did uh, the pilot for Dr. Dimension Pants, which is Brad Hayden's new uh, series. Hopefully that's coming out. Um, um, oh, I've lost the series. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, I, um, I, I, I created and developed my own um, cartoon, and we just optioned that out, so um, I can't talk too much about that, but hopefully that's coming out soon, and I can continue um, voicing cartoons and um, on the TV and the radio, and just uh, just absolutely loving it, and thank you guys for everything, for all the support we're getting. Thanks. I love I love making voice. I love um, voice work. Um, I wish I had made my living for the last 25 years with voice work. I have done some that I've loved. I love being a fat lady in Pippin Long Stocking. And I've been the French wife in Anatole. Especially as, as my son was, was clawed, my, my uh, geeky mouse son in it, which was really fun to work with him. Um, Basically, I've had a drama school for, for young people for 20 years, and I've gone on performing as well. Um, I've written eight plays for children. I'm at the moment working on a one-woman show for myself. Um, and I also have become a plotter. Um, I have nothing to sell except I'd love you to come to my art sale at the Performing Arts Lodge later on. I've got information about it for you, but I, I love doing it. It's such fun to be this creative. Um, you probably saw me in Cold Effects commercial recently. It's probably the lowest point of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I do this. <laughs> Look out for me. <laughs> I was in Degrassi recently, that was really fun, and, and I had a heart attack, a heart attack in Murdoch recently. I had a heart attack 12 times, it's very, very tiring. <laughs> it was because I touched a, a mummy, I mean, not my mummy, I mean a mummy. <laughs> anyway, I love this, this is the best career ever, and if you're an actor in Canada, you have to be able to do a bit of everything, and we do, and we love it, and we love you for enjoying us, thank you. Around the table today, we kind of got a sample of almost everybody, and most of the time at the conventions, people try to get you know one of every character. Now, usually at a convention, you don't have multiple sailor moons or multiple tuxedo masks. Have any of you who have voice characters who have had other people voice those characters as well uh, ever met the other people? And what was that like? You know, the, the universe didn't get destroyed and we touched each other. <laughs> well, I can speak for that because Emily Claire Barlow uh, was also Sailor Mars. I think she was Venus as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she had I, don't, I, I don't know why I have to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, um, but we're super good friends. So yeah, the universe did not explode and we still have drinks together when she's not off being an amazing singer, jazz singer, award-winning jazz singer. See that? Now I'm plugging all her work as well. <laughs> She also cleans toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, as for uh, myself, Reno uh, and I have never really met. I don't think we've actually crossed paths. Um, but uh, Vince Carraza, I've known Vince for years. I haven't seen him in, uh, seen him in a while because he's in uh, Los Angeles now. New York. I, I knew that. Um, <laughs> joking. You guys are good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know Vince. We worked on a, a, I think, Earth Final Conflict once together and stuff. Oh. Uh, but that was before he became uh, a tuxedo masked and 
Uh, the only thing I could say is we both did a radio interview to the same uh, Las Vegas radio station where they did like, hey, this is Toby Proctor, he's Tuxedo Mask, and then they spent 40 minutes talking to me. It was awesome, and then I clicked on the Vince Carras button, they did the same thing with him. And, like, <laughs> I, I couldn't help but listen to the whole thing, it was so cool. It was like, I want to be Vince now, he sounds cool too. <laughs> so, it was kind of neat having someone talk about the exact same characters, I'm sure you know kind of what that's like a little bit. Um, but it was uh, weird, but no, there's no bad blood whatsoever, he's, he's a good guy, so yeah. And you, and you guys were both on the show at the same time when he was out, but maybe yeah. that's worth the movie at the same time. I mentioned that I knew Tracy uh, from childhood, and also we've continued to work together. Uh, I directed a series called Flying Run in Junior High. She was in that <gasps> and that was really fun. I and mean, she's so talented, as you are, Ron, as you are. Um, she's just, she's great to work with. I don't see her because she, I think she's still at West, but if I did, I'd be happy to see her. And what I wanted to say about Linda Valentine, who took over the role of Sailor Moon when I was pregnant, is that she had a really tough gig. Taking over a, uh, a voice that's been established by someone else is harder than people might imagine because there, there's a big responsibility on your shoulders. You're supposed to sound like that person and yet you're supposed to make the role your own and it's, there are all these kind of contradictory rules that go along with that. And I think she did a really good job and it was a hard job and I just think she did it. I took over Karopi. <laughs> I was Karopi, the little frog, but see, none of you know Karopi. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of when I see those naps, I on them, I think, why not Karopi? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I had to listen to the voice, and then I had to uh, audition sort of over the phone to be accepted as Karopi, and it's fun to be a little boy, you know, I, I really loves it. Um, so I took over that. I just want to mention one other thing though, that Susan Roman um, directed me in a, a show that I just adored, which was called Animal Shelf, and I played a tiny little pink teddy bear. And Susan and I would have to stop recording every so often and go, oh, Something fun I just like to do. So um, some of the some of the attacks, some of the transformation sequences that were never in the show, or that some of you didn't get a chance to do, uh, I was wondering if I could get some of you guys to do that. Um, so for example, Sailor Stars was never done. There wasn't a ton of new attacks in that. Um, Sailor Moon has an attack in that. Starlight Honeymoon Therapy Kiss. Terry, I was wondering if you could do that for us. So just say Starlight. She drags it on a bit. Starlight Honeymoon Therapy Kiss. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's when she attacks. Yeah, she spins around a lot. You don't have to spin around. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Starlight honeymoon therapy. Sailor V manga, Sailor V did a Sailor V kick. She screams Sailor V kick when she kicks the step. Can you give us give us that?
writing. <laughs> now, I had a couple of live action ones. I'll probably go through a lot of those tomorrow. But uh, I was wondering if uh, Jill, if you could do Luna Prism Power Makeup for us. That is Luna's transformation sequence. <laughs> So Luna is a plush doll that is also seen <laughs> in so, uh, All of a sudden she shows up as like a ten-year-old girl, I don't know how old she is at one point, and then she pulls her cell phone out and does Luna Prison Power makeup. She turns into this thing and attacks us. Pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ten, so Yeah. Luna Prism Power Makeup! Now, just one last one. Now, Julie, you played young Darian in one of the movies. So, I was wondering if you could just give us a meatball head for uh, that's, that's Darian's line. All three of the meatball heads. <clears throat> Meatball head. Did she ever talk about it? No, it, it, it actually never came up, but I, 
would love to see a crossover. Like we were talking about some interesting kind of crossovers that could happen, say, between uh, this show and Flashpoint, or between Max and Ruby. And <laughs> 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 Sarah Ruby's Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, oh, we actually well. never did. Um, she, uh, yeah, she, she saved the world and kicked butt uh, many, many times. She was a groundbreaker as well, and she was a gymnast, and a, a, she's an astonishing actress and a singer. Uh, singer composer uh, in her own right. So, but no, we actually didn't have that conversation. Oh. Okay, one last question. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah. uh, where would each of your characters be? <laughs> It'd be about thirty-five if we go by that. <laughs> um, I think Sammy would be an alcoholic. <laughs> Melvin would be managing General Motors. <laughs> Pretty sure that Sailor, I, I don't know what Sailor Moon would be like. Pretty sure that Ray would be a superstar, because she was a singer, so I'm going to say, yeah, multi-platinum selling superstar. <laughs> um, I think that Lita would probably be the owner of a massage parlor. <laughs> Assistant managing an Orange Julius. <laughs> you know the ones that are actually shaped like an orange? That's yeah. right. <laughs> but it's on the waterfront. Okay. Artemis would just be chilling under a tree with a baby with an old cat in it. <laughs> Luna would be dead on the first field. <laughs>